What's up everyone, this is Sunnyvale, and today I will be doing a tutorial video on how to get into Draft. If, uh, if you're new to Draft and want to get into it, I'll be showing you the ins and outs as well as a few tools that can help you out. So what is Draft? Draft is a, well, it, to me it's the uh, most exciting mode in Eternal, and I think it's also one of the most rewarding. Um, it's kind of difficult to explain. Uh, but I'll take my best crack at it. So instead of building a card out of the uh, out of the cards that you already own, uh, yeah, this is not the most helpful. Instead of <laughs> instead of building a deck with cards that you already own, um, you will actually be making uh, a deck out of four packs and uh, a forty-five card deck out of those four packs and battling with that until you reach seven wins or three losses, whichever comes first. Um, so the way that you build your deck is um, you open a pack and you take one card from it, whichever card you want, and you pass the rest of them. They'll be passed to a, few, a, a, a player that is drafting in the future, um, not necessarily someone that's drafting at the same time if you're familiar with Magic Draft. Um, and then you will receive a pack that someone else in the past has uh, opened and taken a card from. Um, here, I'll get this started. Um, so here we are opening a pack. We get to take a card for this and we can add it to our deck. There will be some cuts. We won't, uh, we won't play every card we pick, but we'll play uh, most of them. And you definitely want your cards to be uh, ones that you want to have in our deck. So the, the next pack, I'll take a card here and then the next pack um, will be passed to me um, and there will only be 11 cards in it because someone previously had taken a card from it. Um, then I take one card from that and it passes along. And then I will receive a card of 10 packs, which is from the same person that packed us the card from 11 packs. So this goes on until you've picked 12 picks out of this pack. Um, and all of those uh, cards will be given to you by the same player who subsequently received them from uh, the same player that passed to them and so on and so forth. And then in pack two, you have four packs. In pack two, you will do a similar thing, except it'll be uh, the pack will be handed to you by someone else. Um, not it differs from Magic in that it's not the same person that passed that you are passing to. Um, this is just another person who has drafted previously will be passing you pack two. Um, and so something to keep in note is that uh, packs one and four are both of the set Fall of Argentport. That's the newest set. Uh, packs two and three are a curated pack of cards selected from the first three sets, and those will also be those will both come from the same person. So, pack one and four comes from person A. Packs two and three come from person B, and need, and both of them have the, both of those players have presumably finished their draft and com completely finished playing their decks already. Okay, so you may be asking. Which card should I take? There are so many choices. I don't know which ones <laughs> I should be picking. Well, I've created a tool, well, I've created a, a guide, I suppose, um, as to as to how I rate the cards and what I believe their uh, relative power levels are. So if you go to uh, eternaltitans.com, by the way, if you are looking for eternal content, this is a great place to uh, go. It has all sorts of content from uh, mostly Manu and myself, but Kamado, Ahorn, Delphin, just members of the team Eternal Titans post their uh, eternal content here. So I made a uh, draft ranking guide that ranks all the cards that you'll see in draft. If you go to draft and click on FOA draft ratings, you'll be brought to this page, um, which is a spreadsheet that has every card that you might see listed by how good I think they are, S being the best and E being cards that you absolutely don't want to use. I also have a little bit of a, a blurb here um, to help guide you. Um, you'll notice that some of these are highlighted. The, uh, the salmon colored ones are uh, worth splashing and then the uh, cyan ones are uh, conditional and you only want to use them in the right circumstances. So uh, for this first pack, for example, we have a Bloodthirsty Brawler or something, and if you want to look up Bloodthirsty Brawler, um, uh, it's going to be a mixed faction card, and it's in Fall of Argent Port Draft. So you click here, and then you look for Bloodthirsty Brawler, and here it is under A, so that's a very highly rated card. And you can do that for all of the, uh, all of the various cards that there are in this pack. Um, you can look them up by faction and then by which packs they are. The other refers to the curated packs that you receive in pack two and three. 
Okay, um, so there is actually a tool that makes that a little easier. Um, Chemo ET came out with an overlay that displays all this information in your in-game screen. So if you go to this, I'll I'll link this to the I'll put a link to this in chat in the in the uh, description of the video. And you click on Chemo ET .zip, you unzip it, and you get uh, this, and you run Chemo ET. So here it is, and uh, so then you can go to the settings button. There are two uh, draft tier lists rated on here. There's TDCs as well as my own. Um, I obviously <laughs> recommend uh, using my own, but but if you are looking for a second opinion, you can take a look at theirs as well. Um, anyway, um, so you do need to have your game in a specific uh, uh, visual setting for this to work. It has to be uh, 1920 by 1080 and windowed to make this work. This is still in an early release, uh, so potentially it could uh, get to the point where where the tool works on all sorts of settings. But anyway, those are the settings you have to use in order to make this to work now. So you press the play button. Ooh. Uh oh, what's going on? Wait, there we go. Okay, excellent. So it took it took a second to uh, took a second to load up, um, but now here we have the ratings, and it shows you based on um, what my ratings are, uh, how I feel about each of these cards. So <laughs> so you can get an idea of which cards are strong. Okay, so um, I think the pick here. The, one thing about the multi-faction cards is, despite their rating, they're not cards that you actually want to take early on because. Uh, well, you'll be seeing cards of all of the factions uh, as you draft, and playing multi-faction cards is difficult because you basically have to be both factions, or you have to make some concessions in your deck in order to account for the fact that you have a multi-faction card. Um, anyway, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and take the Welding Torch here because it's the most highly rated card. Living Example is in a close second, I would say, um, but we're going to go ahead and take the Welding Torch. Okay, so now we're on to the next pack. You can see, as you can see, um, the the ratings reload. So uh, now you have to start thinking about not just what's the best card, but what cards are being passed to you. Remember the packs that are being passed to you. Time to tip the scales. <laughs> Oops, <laughs> my alerts appear to be on. Um, can that go away? Okay. <laughs> okay. So keep in mind that. Uh, the, the packs are being passed to you by someone that has the same goals in mind. So they're trying to build a deck, and they're trying to stay on faction, um, or, or just like build a very coherent deck, sticking to one, uh, two or three factions, and, and just build a very powerful deck. <laughs> I feel like I'm repeating myself. Um, <clears throat> build a coherent deck out of the cards that they're drafting. So if, ideally, um, you would draft all cards of one faction from the first pack, so that uh, the person that you are passing to will not see any powerful cards of those, uh, of those of that faction. For example, if the person passing to us is taking all strong time cards or something, then we would never see those time cards because we're only seeing the remnants of their pack. Um, so in order for us to have a good deck, we would not play any time cards. Um, so that is called signals or reading signals. And uh, that's a really important part of drafting. So it's really important to take note of what signals you're getting past. Okay, so this this pack is actually quite strong. Wait, where'd it go? Okay, there we go. Um, we got Welding Torch, which is our first pick. There's also Corrupted Umbrin, which I think is in the running for uh, strongest common in the set. Um, so that's really high. I really like Temple Standard as well, and Longhorn Treasurer and Peace Giver's Helm are also no jokes. Um, so this is a very strong pack. It's very difficult to tell what the signals are. Um, fire, time, shadow, justice, primal. Yeah, all all the factions are represented also. So uh, usually the way to read signals is to see what factions uh, are being passed to, or what factions are lacking strong cards in, in the packs that are being passed to you. So it's very difficult to tell now. Um, I would say that Primal is the weakest faction, but even then it's difficult to say. Also, we know based on the fact that there are three, th still three uncommons and no rare in the pack that the previous person took a rare. So I'm, I'm just going to take a Welding Torch. It's it's good to be able to uh, 
stay on faction with your first pick, but honestly, you shouldn't uh, weigh in your first pick uh, that highly when considering a second pick. Uh, because it's more important to read the signals correctly than to be able to play your first pick. Okay, so we're going to take the Welding Torch. Alright, let's take a look here. Um, there's another great card in Ruination Sledge here. Um, and that's another good fire card. There's also a great Primal card in Changey Stick. And I think it's worth noting that the Time cards, the Shadow cards, and the Justice cards are all pretty weak. Um, anyway, I, Changey Stick is very good, but uh, as, as a tiebreaker, I'm just going to stay on stay on faction and take the ruination sledge so ideally i would end up um being done with done with this pack with all fire cards or colorless cards and fire cards um but i mean that doesn't always happen sometimes signals get messed up sometimes you don't read them completely correctly um and and that doesn't always happen <laughs> but but that is the ideal to uh, be able to be cemented in one faction um, in your first pack. I'm going to take the rotor cycle here. It goes very well with the weapons. Um, fly a flyer with these plus three attack weapons is just like very scary. Ends the game very quickly. Also, rotor cycle is of particularly note, particular note because it's a pretty strong card that doesn't require any faction requirements. You can play it in basic and basically any deck. The worst thing that could happen is if I take no more fire cards. Like there, I don't see any more fire cards for the rest of the. Uh, draft and um, then uh, <laughs> then I can't play these cards which are very powerful um, but hopefully that won't happen and one more thing I should say is that you do get to keep the cards that you pick um, so that's pretty nice uh, you can pick just you can just keep on picking all the rares but I feel like the draft the rewards in draft are strong enough that uh, that's not a great idea okay so in the last pack, um, we saw, or the, the last couple of packs, we've seen good primal cards. Uh, justice was being taken, or at least we didn't see good justice cards beyond the first pack, the the first, the second pick, the first pack that was passed to us, uh, and we continue to not see great justice cards. Um, this time card is pretty strong, and we saw the Temple Tactic pass to us, which I think is a good card. Some people really like the Veteran Strategist, but when you're being aggressive, having a 0-4, like wasting a card for a 0-4, doesn't seem like the best thing, even though it does help you uh, play cards of many different in, uh, factions. So I'm going to go ahead and take the Illumination Wisp. It's also insane with uh, all these weapons, so we're going to go ahead and that. And I think that like Training Ground is pretty good as well. Uh, Crest is good, but... It loses a lot of value when you're not in both factions, or when you're not trying to play cards in both factions. Okay. All right. Um, so <clears throat> that's a good primal card, but uh, we continue to see another good time card, and I th I'm pretty excited about taking a Wormstone here. Um, all right, so I'm going to do that. So maybe, again, no good justice cards. This rating is actually conditional, knowing my own spreadsheet. Uh, <laughs> I know that this B- minus is a bit misleading. It's only good when you have the right deck for it. Um, anyway, we're going to take the Wormstone uh, and hope that time continues to be open. Okay, none of these cards are very good except the Blade Whirl. Uh, we'll take it just in case we end up in Shadow somehow, but uh, we're not particularly happy about this Pack. I think Overheat and Last Rites are both, like, not not cards that you want to be playing. Okay. Hmm. We were saying that uh, Justice cards were not really coming, but Guard Dog is very strong. I don't think I want to go in that direction because I continue to believe that Justice is being taken by someone that is passing to us. So I'm going to continue with the Shadow cards because Shadow Stalker is also a very good uh, card. Subterranean Sentry is not that exciting. Um, wow, okay, Sky Cruise. Sky Cruise is not bad. <sighs> we haven't seen any good fire cards since we got the second Welding Torch and the Ruination Sledge, which means that maybe someone three chairs down or something is, is taking up fire cards. Um, if we think that we're fire trick shots, actually kind of a reasonable card if you're just really aggressive. But I'm going to take the Sky Crew here. Alright, Clan Wallbreaker is on the bad side of medium, and I don't think Lunging Wisp is really playable. Your last few picks are rarely going to be very exciting. Okay, well, um, this is interesting. Okay, 
So, here's the second pack. Uh, we're going to receive uh, all of our picks from the same person, although it's going to be a different person. Um, but it's the same idea. Uh, and these cards are curated from the first three sets uh, and no longer just follow of Arjun Pur. Okay, here's the deal. Caleb Reborn, very powerful card. Um, <laughs> 4 4 for 4 that gets bigger and has an ultimate that's beneficial. However, he costs double fire and double primal. We would like to be a fire deck, I think, with the Ruination Sledges, the Welding Torch, and even like the Clan Wallbreaker is fine pillar. Um, there's also a good card in Oni Run in here, strong fire card. Um, the issue with taking the Caleb Reborn here, as tempting as it may be, is that we have to be exactly fire primal to play him. It's basically impossible to play him otherwise. Um, and honestly, we saw, we did see a changey stick, and we saw a, um, ooh, I forget the, is it spike back, I think? It's a pretty good card. We saw two good primal cards, uh, being passed to us, but for the most part, we didn't see very exciting primal cards, so I don't think that primal is going to be that open in packs three and four. We could get lucky, and primal could be open in this pack, um, but I'm not really banking on it. I think I just want to take the Oni Ronin. This is a solid card for any fire deck. Yeah, sorry, Caleb. We're going to take the Oni Ronin. Uh, what's more important than having playable cards is making sure that... Or, sorry, having powerful cards is having playable cards. You need to be able to have a functional deck, or else uh, your... Uh, well, you just won't be able to win games. Okay, so here we have a Record Keeper, which is excellent, but only if you're in Time Justice. Since it's a new pack, we should take uh, stock again and uh, see <laughs> see how all the cards are, uh, see, see what uh, factions are being passed to us. So there's one good Primal card, but it's Primal Time, a card that's pretty difficult to play. It's great in fear in those factions, but uh, you have to be in both of those factions. I think we're leaning away from them. So if a primal card, if the, if the person passing to us is taking primal cards, um, <laughs> then we should stay out of primal. I think that in packs, packs one and four, justice cards are being taken, so we should stay out of justice. Um, so I think the pick here is either Recogulator or Knife Jack. Recogulator has some strong synergies. This is a conditional rating, the C+. Plus. Uh, Knife Jack is not the most exciting, although it can get the job done, especially if you suit it up with something or follow it up with more additional uh, aggressive plays. We only have Wormstone and Illumination Wisp in time, but those are pretty exciting cards. I think that any of the top three cards over here could be, uh, uh, could be the pick. It's just a matter of, do we think we're time? Do we think we're fire? Or shadow? Do we think we're fire? And I really don't know. We only have two good shadow cards. Um, and I don't think that Lumen Shepherd would be particularly great in this deck. Uh, I think I'm just going to go with the Recogulator, uh, just because I, I would most like to play Fire. Okay, so Cabal Bludgeoner. That goes extremely well with all of the uh, weapons that we've taken. And also we see some Primal cards, so maybe Primal isn't as... This is not Grit, by the way. This is a Gloaming Wisp. All right. <laughs> Looks like there are some, still some kinks to be worked out here. Um, anyway, we'll take the Cabal Bludgeoner. If we can put a weapon on a Bludgeoner, it's going to be gigantic. We already have three great weapons. Um, so we'll just go ahead and do that. Okay. Gredon Jones, pretty good. Again, this is a conditional rating. There are some synergies that really depend on uh, Grenadin. But we are in the faction pair that, that cares about it. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do this. And uh, hopefully we can solidify into a Fire Shadow deck. Okay, uh, Audacious Bandit is not bad. Hip Shot's okay. Steward of Prophecy is just, like, not that exciting. And Umber and Coaxer, I think, is not very exciting. I think that Bandit is actually better than Coaxer. Okay. Anyway. Um, all right, there's another Granite and Drone. Flash of Duelist is okay, but... Uh, it does look like these Grenadins are coming toward us. Ooh, here's a pack that doesn't have anything very exciting. Okay, so we could take a card that is, like, kind of powerful, but I really do think that we are definitely in fire. We just have a lot of cards in fire that we're going to want to play, 
uh, and some synergies that we can set up with uh, cards that want to sacrifice other units or whatnot. Um, and we have basically no reason to take this primal card, even if it is better. So I'm just going to take the card that can make our deck. Uh, this is bad. <laughs> this pack is not exciting. There's a very outside chance that we could want a Grenomender, although I think it's unlikely. Alright, um, neither of these cards are fantastic. Gorilla Fighter is, like, not the most embarrassing thing, but we'll take it. And then for the end of the pack, we don't really expect to get anything too exciting, although Umbran Thirster is not the worst. Okay. So, um, this pack is going to be uh, passed to us by the same person that was passing to the last pack, so we kind of expect some, uh, I don't know, I, I, like... That, that last pack just wasn't very good. We didn't see very many good cards in general. Um, so it's kind of difficult to predict what we were going to see, but we did. We, we picked up some okay fire cards. Um, so hopefully we can keep that coming. Um, Alright, so this is interesting. Bloodletter is... Actually, Bloodletter is a really strong card, and we might be able to play it. This is a card that requires a splash, but it might be worth speculating on, because I think that Bloodletter wins a lot of games. That's why it's... Uh, rated so highly. I think other options that are reasonable are Devour. Devour goes well with uh, all of the synergies that we have. Slumbering Stone and Dark Return and Grendendrone are just kind of just kind of good cards that are um, worth playing in a lot of the time, but I want to take the Bloodletter and see if we can splash it. Oh my goodness. Vodican Staff, that's another very good card. Okay, well, I think with the thought that we're going to take the without we have the blood letter um i either want stone scar banner or devour because it, and when you take a card like this that's extremely powerful you need to be able to play it and the way to do that is with fixing cards that provide multiple influence um so the banners are a cycle of cards that help you do such a thing um devour wouldn't be bad either just because we have a lot of expendable units to sacrifice um, but I think I'm just going to take the Stone Scar Banner. It's, it's not that exciting. Banners get a lot better when uh, you have cards you want to splash. Okay, this is not... Oh, wait, Combust. Combust is good removal. And it really uh, relies on having cards that you want to sacrifice. And we have a bunch of those, so I'm pretty happy with that. Alright, there's another card that has the same uh, plan. Although there's also a Darewood Prowler. Hmm. Darewood Prowler is a really strong card that also just wants you to have fodder for to sacrifice to it because you sacrifice a useless unit and draw two cards. Could be a big deal. Although sometimes one of those cards is a power and that's kind of unfortunate. Burnout's a much more proactive version of the same thing. Um, but I think I'm, I'm, I'm just going to take the Darewood Prowler here. I think it's pretty good. Uh, we're going to have this sacrifice theme going on. Okay, I actually like Cover of Darkness a fair bit. Tumblebang... I mean, it kind of goes with the sacrifice thing, but the uh, the just being a 3-1 is not the most exciting thing. Cover of Darkness can definitely get the job done. Uh, I think I would rather have one tump Cover of Darkness than a random Tumble Bang, because there are cards that can replace Tumble Bang. Ooh, this is a good one. Ravenous Thorn Beast also cares about having fodder to sacrifice. It's a very powerful card when you do have that. I don't really like uh, Amethyst Waystone. Um, it, Rampage is fine. It's not insane. It's not one of the better tricks out there. But I, I'm really low on hip shot. I don't think it's a very exciting card. Okay, we could just take the Pit Fighter here because we might play it. Uh, there, it does look like time is open in this pack <laughs> uh, as we're getting down to the last few picks here. Okay, wow, Sheriff Marley. That's another gigantic bomb. This this pack is good for basically anyone that's not us, actually. <laughs> We've got Sheriff Marley, Changey Stick, and Illumination Wisp all, which are very highly rated. Um, but I, I just don't think there's any way we take the Sheriff Marley. We're just not going to play it. Um, that's, that's pretty fancy. We're going to take the Lethroy Target Caller. I think in pack four, if you already have a bunch of playables, you just want to make sure that your deck continues to be playable. Actually, you know what? Grid Markeroni might be pretty good in this deck, but we don't have very many cards that cost two, so I think the we're going to take the Target Caller. Although, I think the Oni is consideration. So, in the last pack, the ratings are there, but they're not... I guess they can be helpful. You need to think about what your deck needs to do in order to function. 
So like, this card is amazing, but we can't play it. So it's not making our deck any better. This card is potent it's usually better than this, although like with the weapons, with the powerful weapons we have, maybe Grave Marconi is pretty strong in our deck. But we have no cards that cost two, so we need to make sure that we have a curve. We can do something on every turn and we're not just taking a turn off to do nothing. Ooh. Okay, so there's some interesting cards here. We could take Petition, which would help us get that Blood Letter because we can get our uh, Justice Influence with it. We could also just take Scale Channel Sorcerers or Cut Ties. Uh, Cut Ties is a pretty reasonable removal spell. Um, and Sorcerer is just a medium reasonable body although we have a few things that qualify as medium reasonable bodies so i think that's pretty low priority i think it's either the cut ties or the petition and i only have one card that kills something so i'll take cut ties you know cut, cut ties is the type of card you don't want too much of in your deck because it's so expensive all right we'll just take the petition here so that perhaps we can play the blood letter Ooh, kriva i don't think i've ever played kriva i don't think she's that great um but she does something that's pretty unique she definitely gives you plenty of fodder to sacrifice. Well, given that we have so many weapons and, like, target caller, I'm going to take the Territorial Elf, uh, because you can do a lot of damage with this if it's left unchecked. Uh, so I'll go ahead and take that. And there's another Cut Ties. How many expensive cards are we playing? We've got the Direwood Prowler, but we're not playing any of the rest of these. I'll take a second Cut Ties. Uh, we're not playing any of the rest of these, I don't think. Sewer Sludge. Ooh, Sewer Sludge is not bad. Drifter is also pretty okay. But I think I would rather have a Sewer Sludge, because we're not actually that aggressive. Um, we have some ways of dishing out the damage, but uh, ultimately, um, we are just going to kind of sit back for a lot of the game. Okay, I'll take the Opluakra. Wait. Let me just make sure I don't have too many expensive cards. We have the Cover of Darkness and the Blade Whirl. Uh, Op Locker is pretty nice. It can gain flying, although it does deal damage one, one damage to you, and you have to pay for it. Uh, but that's still pretty good. Flying is difficult to deal with. Parliamental is good, but that's a conditional rating. Um, you need to play a spell in order to make that work. So we'll take the Op Locker. Okay, there's a good weapon and hair trigger pistol. Um, you know, let's take the card that's on faction. Oh wow, Welling Torch this late? That is very surprising. All right, so now I've gone through and picked all my cards. I'm going to turn this off. Uh, so now we need to make a deck of 45 cards. Usually you're going to have 18 power, um, although depending on the needs of the deck, that could be higher or lower. And depending on how many standards you picked up, which are cards that are power until you've hit 5 power, and then if you haven't played it yet, it turns into a spell. Okay, but we don't have any of those, so it doesn't really pertain to us. That's a lot. Four drops. Uh, okay, this, this, this. Probably playing the gun, probably playing the Thorn Beast, probably playing the Shadow Stalker, definitely playing this one. Probably Cover of Darkness, the Alpalocra, Blade Roll of Cut Ties, and Direwood Prowler. Um, combust, Roger Cycle, and Blood Letter. And petition counts as a power, so I'm not going to put it in yet. So, this deck has an issue in that it has so many cards that cost four. If you have that spike in your curve, you want this to look like this. You want it to, uh, well, I mean, you don't want it to have the most ones. You want it to have the most twos and then slope gently downward uh, as you go up the curve. Uh, that just ensures that you can uh, further your game plan. There's something that you can do at each point in the game. Anyway, so I think this deck is going to want uh, 18 power. So I, I think we want to cut something here and we can probably cut the bandit or the wall breaker maybe we could cut both honestly both of those are good in very aggressive decks and I even though we are in the faction of unbridled aggression <laughs> uh, we're not the most aggressive deck in the world I don't even know if we want to play cover of darkness because we're going to have to block at some points I do need another card though. I don't think I want to play 19 power in this deck. That seems a bit excessive. Although, yeah, with no way of filtering our draws, I think that that is not uh, what we want. Okay, so I, I think I need to find another card to slot in here. 
Uh, even like this Corona Lumbrin is an option just because I need something that costs three. I don't think I want something that costs four, um, even though I think it's pretty unexciting. And sometimes that's what you have to do. Sometimes you have to make uh, considerations for uh, having a functional deck. I don't think we're going to need the cover of darkness. It's good in really aggressive decks, but I think we're just going to go bigger than most people. Anyway, we're going to play the Petition and the Stone Scar banner, and then we're going to uh, add power, and it'll automatically give you some amount of power to use. I don't think we want four justice. I think we just want two, if that. Um, because we do have the Petition to help find our justice for the blood letter that we're playing. So I think this is more or less what our deck would look like. It's got nine shadow sources and half the deck is uh, shadow. So actually, you might want a tenth source. Nine might be okay. We don't have very many double shadow cards. We've got the shadow stalker and the prowler, but that one's pretty expensive in the pistol. Um, so I think the consideration in here is whether I want um, to cut a justice or fire source for an additional shadow source. No, I'm not too into it. Uh, I think this should be pretty good. For most of our cards, we only need one uh, influence in that faction. Like fire, we only need one the entire game and we're good. Uh, we only need one fire influence, two shadow, si two shadow influence, and one justice sigil, uh, justice influence for our deck to work. Okay, so that is the drafting and deck building portion. So now I'll go into the games. Um, I'll go ahead and narrate my... I'm, I'm going to make a stop in the video. But uh, I'll go ahead and narrate uh, each of these games. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that video, and uh, stay tuned for uh, stay tuned to see how this deck plays out. Um, hopefully, we can get up to seven wins. If I had to guess, this, this is a good deck, but it's not the most insane deck. So, uh, you know, five wins, and I think I'll be pretty happy. Anyway, okay, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys soon.